Welcome to the video for the mean value theorem. This is day three of our theorem section two notes. In this video we're going to learn how to apply the mean value theorem. As you may recall in yesterday's notes we learned about Rolle's theorem which said that if we have a continuous function that uh, if f of a is equal to f of b then somewhere within the interval of a to b we would hit a point where the slope is zero and that's Rolle's theorem and today we're going to learn about the mean value theorem uh, the mean value theorem is basically a extension of Rolle's theorem the difference being that f of a does not have to equal f of b so for Rolle's theorem we're going to prove a slope of zero, but for the mean value theorem, we're going to prove a, any slope or a more specific slope. So let's take a look at it. Okay, first we're going to look at it graphically, and then we'll look at the, the text of it. The mean value theorem basically says that if you have a continuous function from A to B, if the function is continuous on the closed interval and differentiable on the open interval, then somewhere there will be a slope that is equal to the secant slope. So we're going to come back and revisit how to find the secant slope and prove that somewhere between A and B there exists a tangent line whose slope is equal to the sequent slope. And again, this is an existence theorem. It proves that it exists. It doesn't prove where it exists. And it doesn't prove how many there might be. In this case, we see that the secant line has two tangent lines that are parallel. So this is going to be set up very similarly. You start with your conditions. The condition is that it's continuous on the closed interval and differentiable on the open interval. So we have to always check those two conditions before we start running through it. And then the concluding statement for the mean value theorem is that the slope of the function or the derivative at some value c is equal to the slope of the secant line. So remember, secant line was f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So let's try tackling some of these. Determine if the MVT applies. So first we state that since f of x is continuous on 0, 2, and differentiable on the open interval 0 to 2, the MVT can be applied. So we have to check those conditions first. It's a polynomial, so it is continuous everywhere, and it is differentiable everywhere. So let's go ahead and tackle this problem. The first thing we want to do is we want to find f prime of x. So f prime of x is equal to 3x squared minus 1. And we also want to find the slope of the secant line. So f of 2 minus f of 0 over 2 minus 0. And if we work that out, f of 2 minus f of 0, that's uh, 6 minus 0 over 2, which is 3. And so the MVT states that the derivative at some value c is equal to the slope of the secant line. And all we need to do now is solve for c. So add 1 to both sides, divide by 3, and we get c squared equals 4 thirds. And then we can conclude that c is equal to plus and minus the square root of 4 thirds. And we need to check against the interval we're provided. We're provided with 0 to 2, so we ignore the negative value, and the only one we're going to include is positive root 4 over 3. 
which if we simplify that down, we get 2 root 3 over 3. And that is our answer. That is the location where the slope is equal to 3. So uh, I think this curve looks something like that. And between 0 and 2, our secant slope is 3. And then at, I don't know, probably somewhere over here. That's a bad mark. There we go. Somewhere over there, we hit a tangent line whose slope is also 3. And that tangent line occurs at x equals 2 root 3 over 3. All right, example five and six are pretty much similar to this one. The only difference is we're going to use our calculator to find these values. Uh, it's not so it's not so easy to do it algebraically by hand. So let's take a look at them. All right, first off, it's a polynomial, so we know that it is continuous on the closed interval, and that it is also differentiable on the open interval. So it's a polynomial, we check those two things, we can then use the mean value theorem. And we just straight up jump to our derivative, f prime of x is 3x squared minus, no, plus 4x minus 1. And our secant slope, f of 2 minus f of negative 1 over 2 minus negative 1 equals, turn to our calculator if we wanted to, equals 12 thirds or equals 4. And so for the mean value theorem, we're going to say that 3c squared plus 4c minus 1 is equal to 4. And we can use our calculator by turning this into a single function and plotting it on the graphing screen and finding the zeros. So we plug this equation into y1 and then calculate the zero. And it's probably a decent idea to set our viewing windows between our x min is negative 1 and our x max is 2. And when we do that, we see that the curve passes through at a value of approximately negative 0 0.786. So again, please check that out on a calculator. Make sure you arrive at the same answer. You do want to use the second calculate 0 command to get the most accurate possible answer. All right, since example six is quite similar to example five, I'm gonna ask that you pause it here and take a shot at doing it yourself. And I will write out the solution uh, while it's paused. So go ahead and pause now. Okay, so first we check to make sure that it's continuous and closed and it's a polynomial. Uh, so it's continuous on the closed interval and differential on the open interval. Then we set the derivative equal to the slope of the secant line. And this particular problem, when we rearrange it, we see that it's actually pretty solvable by hand. So we don't need to turn to the calculator. But we did arrive at two possible values. <clears throat> and we need to take a look at the original interval. And the interval... 0 to 3, so we only want the ones that are in the open interval, so that would be 2. 0 is not part of the open interval, it's only part of the closed interval. So, there you have it. Alright, before we go to uh, Example 7, I wanted to give you a, a couple quick examples of uh, equations that don't satisfy the mean value theorem. 
for example, if we had the absolute value of x plus 4, and we wanted to use the mean value theorem on the interval negative 5 to 0. For this particular equation, because it is not differentiable at x equals 4, sorry, at x equals negative 4, the MVT cannot be applied. So no MVT, uh, because negative 4 is in the interval provided. Uh, another example we might see is, uh, let's do 1 over x minus 2 on the interval of 0 to 3. This function is not continuous and not differentiable at x equals 2. So we, we cannot apply the MVT. Now that doesn't mean that there is no slope which would satisfy the slope of the secant line. It just means that the MVT cannot be used to prove that the slope where there is a point where the slope does exist there. So let's see if I can come up with one more. Okay, uh, with this function, if we we're going to do the interval of 0 to 2, if we actually took the derivative of this function, we would see that we have 2 thirds x minus 1 to the negative 1 third, and we realize there's a non-differentiable point at x equals 1, and that's in that interval, so we can't apply it to this problem. If we change this interval to, say, from 0 to 1, the function is continuous on that interval, and it is differentiable on the open interval, so we could apply the MVT then. Just like if we change this interval to negative 4 to 0, then the MVT could be applied, or this interval, 0 to 2 then the MVT could be applied. All right, let's uh, wrap up with example number seven. Okay, so we want to make sure that uh, f of two stays smaller than a certain number here. Basically, we're given a first point and the slope of the derivative, or a fact that the, the uh, not the slope of the derivative, but the slope of the function is always less than five. And using the MVT, what we can say is that the slope of the secant line between 2 and 0 has to always be less than or equal to the slope of the derivative. And this is basically, uh, we've got a function that's continuous and differentiable, so the MVT can be applied. The slope of the secant line is equal to the slope of the function. So what we get here is kind of the MVT that's been modified a bit. Um, the slope is always less than 5. Going through and solving this, we find that f of 2 is our value of interest, so we can't solve that piece, but all of the other numbers can be substituted in. And using a little bit of algebra, we find that f of 2 has to be less than or equal to 7. So basically you could think of this as if we have our function like this, f of 0 is negative 3, then f of 2, the highest spot it could be is 7. So it's possible that it's lower, but the highest possible spot it could be is at 7 because that is where the slope is 5. If the slope of the function was ever less than 5, you might get a curve that looked like that, and we could have a lower value for f of 2. So let's try doing this with uh, part b. Again, we're going to set up our, the slope of our secant line, f of 5 minus f of, in this case, 1 over 5 minus 1, and this is 
greater than or equal to negative 3. So our secant slope is always greater than or equal to negative 3. And substitute in values, we get 2 minus our value of interest over 4 is greater than or equal to negative 3. 2 minus f of 1 is greater than or equal to negative 12. And we're able to conclude giving us 14 is greater than or equal to f of 1. So again, we could think of this in a diagram if we wish to. I'll leave that as a challenge to the viewer. All right, so hopefully after watching this video, you understand the mean value theorem a little bit better. The basic idea is that the derivative at some point will be equal to the slope of the secant line somewhere between A and B that C exists. So this is actually a pretty interesting idea that gets used in uh, traffic. Uh, the police officers, if they can predict that your average speed was speeding, then they know at some point in time you were actually speeding, even if they never saw you. So there are toll bridges or toll highways that use this system to automatically ticket people who have a higher than speed limit average. All right, thanks for watching.